to the extent that we live our lives in a manner that is consistent with the truth in our heart, we thrive. Welcome to the Meyer Clinics podcast, and you just heard a quote from one of your hosts, Dr. Lisa Day. Join our licensed clinical professionals from various backgrounds as they discuss fascinating mental health topics with a wide range of guests. Meyer Clinics is a Christian counseling organization with multiple clinics nationwide dedicated to treating the whole person emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Welcome to our listening family. We thank you for joining us. Hey everyone, Kristen Sinato Walker here. We are back for a round table with Dr. Paul Meyer. This is awesome. Uh, Melanie Van is going to join us in a little bit. She's actually doing what a lot of moms do and trying to get her kids to sleep. So we will wait for her to chime in when she's ready, but I am here with Dr. Paul Meyer. Paul, thanks for coming on. Hi, Kristen. It's always my privilege. (laughs) Well, we feel the same way. And we're going to talk about a subject that is near and dear to all of us. And if you remember, listeners, a while ago, we did a show about, we did the, what what, what is it called? The World Health Organization's test? Yeah. 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 And I've got, I've got that tonight too, but we'll breeze through that because we want to mostly, well, we want you to find out whether you have ADD or not, but ADHD. But we want to talk about all the positive things that happen when you get it treated. Yeah, yeah, because we all, it was so funny because we all took that test together on the air. And I was, that was such an eye opener for me. I had had someone tell me, you definitely have ADHD, but I, I didn't really, this guy was like flirting with me. He was also my doctor. And so I was like, I don't believe anything that comes out of this guy's mouth. But when mm-hmm. we did the show together, uh, I went, Oh my gosh. Okay. But that was like a year ago and I didn't do mm-hmm. anything about it until recently. And I'm, I, it's inspired me that now that I'm being treated for it properly and so on, um, it's inspired me to want to talk about this more because there's so many people out there that could have a very different life if they realize they have it and they get the proper treatment for it. You know, has it helped you? Oh my gosh. Well, it was so great. This, I have to give a shout out to you, Paul, because you know, we hear things when we hear them. And so I did a show and it was lovely. And, um, And I was going to set up this very expensive medical appointment. And I thought, I'm going to, I'm going to call, I'm going to email Paul about this. Why do I not use resources right at my fingertips? I know Paul, Dr. Paul Meyer, he treats this. I could just ask him, does this sound like what I should do? And you were like, let's save you a lot of time (laughs) and no, you don't need to do that. You know, blah, blah, blah. So I ended up taking that advice. I went to my primary care doctor. She was wonderful. And she prescribed me um, 30 milligrams of Vyvanse. And it is like, I'm living on some kind of wonderful planet. Not, not like I'm high, just my ability to focus, I can't even believe I've lived without it this long. Yeah, me too. I've got really bad ADD. And uh, and I didn't know I had it. I, somehow I made it through medical school without knowing I had it or without ADD meds. And so I had to use a, a foggy brain to make it through. <laughs> so I had to work you had to extra, work extra hard. hard. Yeah. <laughs> now, now when I take uh, when I take my ADD medicine in the morning, I literally get about twice as much done uh, during the day as I do if I don't take it. And uh, I carry a few spares. I got a little $5 miniature safe that I've got screwed to my keychain, key and I've got a few in there. So if I forget it in the morning and I'm, and I'm plugging away at my work and I think, man, I, I'm not as fast as usual, then I'll call home and say, hey, check my medicine box, see if I took my my uh, ADD medicine or not. She said, and my wife says, no, I uh, went out and take it. And then 20 minutes later, I'm cranking away. Yeah. And it's, it's amazing. Cause I think, you know, there's so, well, let's talk about, you know, ways that people, things people can do to see if they have it. What are the 
what's the right way to go yeah. about getting it officially diagnosed and some treatment yeah. options. And then how you've seen as a doctor, as a psychiatrist, how it's changed people's lives. And, okay. and you know, so let's start with the how do you I'll, know? Yeah, I'll start with a little uh, with the quiz. And, and uh, you know, if you got a ton of money and you want to get a, a spec scan to see what type of ADP uh-huh. you have for $5,000, and if you want to go get $5,000 worth of psychological testing to to measure every little detail of what kind you have and things like that. Or if you just want to go see a psychiatrist uh, for, uh, you know, a couple hundred bucks for the workup. And then, uh, and then I see them once every three months. And if they have insurance, it usually covers it. And if they don't, I charge them 88 bucks once every three months. And so, you know, they can make that up in, in extra income. So it's not that expensive uh, to get it treated even by a psychiatrist, but, but uh, let, let me give you the, the quiz that I give my patients when I'm evaluating them. And uh, I, I think uh, it, we just looked it up on the Internet uh, right before the program. Kristen and I looked it up and, and uh, 14% of the population of young people are diagnosed as having ADHD. And I think probably less than half of the ones that really have it find out that they have it. You know, so I think it's you know, about 20% of it's probably maybe. 25% of males and, you know, 15% of females or something like that. There's, it seems to be higher in males than in females, but that could be because uh, some males get misdiagnosed because they have more androgen. So they're just more hyper because of the androgen. But anyway, here's, here's the quiz. And so all of you in our listening family right now, grab a pencil and paper and uh, uh, I'm going to give you 18 questions and uh, I'm going to give you 18 ADD traits, ADHD traits. And um, if you never have it, give yourself a zero. If you rarely have that one, give yourself a one. If you sometimes have that one, give yourself a two. And if you often have it, give yourself a three. And if you very often, like almost all the time, have it, give yourself a four. You got that? So I'm going to give you 18 questions and, and write down either a zero, one, two, three, or four, depending on how often you have that one. Okay, so here we go. Uh, how often do you make careless mistakes when you're doing boring projects? Do you, do, that, do you make careless mistakes? Sometimes that would be a two. Often a three. Very often a four. Okay, number two. How often do you have trouble keeping your attention when you're doing boring projects? You know, rarely would be a one. Sometimes two. Often three. Very often four. Uh, number three. How often do you have trouble concentrating on what people are saying to you? Okay, so again, never Rarely, sometimes, often, or very often. Number four, how often do you have trouble wrapping up the final details of a project after you get all the hard parts done? So after you get almost everything done, do you go ahead and finish it, or do you put off finishing it? Because people with ADHD put off finishing it, even if they're really close. Number five, how often do you have trouble organizing things? So uh, some people have a lot of trouble organizing things and people with ADD are easily distracted. So they'll start organizing their closet, but then they get bored and then and 20 minutes later, they're doing some other project and, you know, nothing ever gets done. Uh, but on the ADD meds, they super focus and they don't want to stop till they get something all organized. So number six, if you have a task that takes a lot of thought, uh, how often do you put off getting it started? Uh, the way I ask my clients, I say, if you were in high school or college and you got assigned a term paper and it was due in two months, would you do it right away? Would you plug away at it? Or would you wait till the last minute? Well, if you're ADHD, you'd almost always wait till the last minute and do it. But if you're not ADHD, you'd want to get it out of the way. So you'd do it right away or you'd get a lot of it done and finish it, you know, maybe a couple weeks later. But you wouldn't wait till the last minute because you wouldn't want to be behind in your schedule. Okay, number seven, how often do you misplace things? And uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm so ADD, I've, I've, I, you know, one thing you can do other than meds is you can do, do things like, I only put my watch in uh, one place. It's either on my arm or it's on the bathroom counter. I don't take it off anywhere else. So at night, I put it on the bathroom counter. 
Or you and, can just uh, staple things to your forehead, but that hurts. So I don't recommend that. <laughs> hey, yeah. Melanie just joined. Or, hey, Mel. <laughs> yeah. hey, hey. hey, Melanie. We're going um, through this World Health yeah. Organization quiz. Enjoy so, you know, like my keys, I only keep them in my, I always keep them only in my pocket. I never lay them down. My wife drives me crazy sometimes because, you know, I love, love the daylights on her, but she drives me crazy <laughs> sometimes because we'll go out to eat and she'll lay her glasses down on the table and lay her keys somewhere else on the table and like you know <laughs> she's ADD but doesn't like to admit it you know <laughs> and so I'm the one that has to look around to make sure you know that we don't leave anything laying around but what what I do is I'll, I'll pay with my credit card and then leave it in the folder and have to go back okay anyway number seven. Oh no we did number seven how often do you misplace things okay number eight how often are you distracted by activities or noises around you if you don't have ADD, then people can be noisy or busy around you and walking around and you're still focused and get your work done. But if you're ADD, every time somebody walks by or you hear noises, you know, you're, you're distracted and look out. Uh, sitting in school, I remember uh, <clears throat> being seven or eight years old and I, I, every time somebody would walk by outside the window or a bird would fly by, I'd be looking out the window instead of listening to what the teacher said and, and lose track. Number nine, but I still got good grades. You know, I don't know. I just worked hard at it, I guess. Number nine, <laughs> how often do you have problems remembering appointments or obligations? Good grief. How did I live without an iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> I, I used to tape notes to the mirror and to the walls and everywhere, you know, and, and then I'd still forget. But uh, now my iPhone uh, gives me messages a week before and the day before and two hours before and <laughs> And then last week, I still missed a, a dental appointment because <laughs> I, I didn't take time to look at my iPhone. So. That was on uh, purpose, that, subconsciously, <laughs> Paul. We need to get into your subconscious yeah. about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I repressed the desire to go see a dentist, you know. <laughs> 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 That's not too easy to figure out. Hard, hard to figure out. So those first nine show if, if you scored uh, on those these first nine that I gave you, if you scored uh, 17 or higher, then you have ADD. Not necessary. The next nine questions are to see if you have the H part, the hyperactivity part. So if you scored 17 or higher, then you probably have ADD. And 80% uh, of the people score, and I give this to almost every client that I see, 80% people score below 17 and about 20% score above it. Okay, number, uh, number 10. Now, now these show if you have hyperactivity. Number 10, how often do you fidget or squirm? And, and we're not talking about just temporarily because sometimes people are going through an anxiety or a crisis or things and they have, and they do these things, but they don't lifelong. Uh, all these things, when I'm asking you them, I'm asking you, have you done these uh, from birth until present in all, all your life? So how often do you fidget or squirm with your hands or feet when you have to sit down for a long time? You know, sometimes it'd be a two, often it'd be a three, very often it'd be a four. How often do you leave your seat during meetings uh, if you wouldn't get in trouble for it, how long, how, how often would you get up and leave your seat during meetings if you wouldn't get in trouble for it? Number, th uh, number, well, it's number, uh, yeah, it's number three on this list. How often do you feel restless or fidgety? Um, how often do you feel restless or fidgety? Uh, number four, how often do you have trouble unwinding and relaxing when you have time to yourself? Hmm. Uh, number five, how often do you feel overly active and compelled to do things like you're driven by a motor. So you'll sit down in, in, in order to relax and, and a minute later, you got to get up and, and uh, do something because uh, you can't sit, stand to sit still. And uh, <laughs> I'll pick on my wife. She's not listening to me right now. So I can do that. You know, she's in the next room. <laughs> so her and I love, as you guys know, we love to watch movies together. Right. But my wife's, uh, my wife's, I think she might be even more ADD than I am, but she denies it. But, but, uh, during a movie, she'll get up and walk in the kitchen and, and wash a dish or something and then come back. <laughs> and somehow she can hear it well enough so she doesn't lose a track of what's happening. In fact, she usually figures out who the guilty party is way before I do. But, <laughs> but so anyway, how often you feel overly active and compelled to get up and do things like you're driven by a motor? Number 15. How often do you talk too much in social situations? Oh, my God, yeah. People with ADD <laughs> tend to talk too much in, in, when they get to a party or something. Uh, number 16, oh, here's one that I'm really guilty of that, my, that takes my wife off. 
if you're in a conversation with a friend or a coworker and your friend can't think of a word for a minute, how often do you finish the sentence for your friend? <laughs> Sometimes it's a two, often it's a three, very often it's a four. I would do that almost all the time because I get bored if I'm standing there waiting for them to finish the sentence. But if I do that to my wife, she gets sick because she wants me to just wait and let her think of the word because she doesn't want me to answer for her. But that's something that we tend to do if we're ADD instead of patiently waiting. Oh, yeah. Number se- number 17, how often do you have trouble waiting your turn in situations where taking a turn is required? The, and the way I phrase this one to make it more realistic is um, – how much does it bother you like to get stuck in traffic or to have to wait at a restaurant, things like that? Does that bother you? Some people, most people, it doesn't bother you. They'll, they'll wait at a restaurant and they'll be able to, you know, play on their phone, play a game on their phone or something, or talk to whoever they're with. And it's no big deal. But if you're like me, if you're ADD, it drives me nuts. I just go to restaurants where I don't have to wait. <laughs> and, and if I get stuck in traffic, I'd rather drive an extra five miles and spend an extra three minutes where I don't have to stop at red lights than, than, I, than I would to have to stop and wait at red lights. And number the final one uh, is number 18, but it's really one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, one, two, three, four, five. You probably got the numbers mixed up because I got them mixed up because okay. there's 18 questions. So <laughs> anyway, this is the last one. How often do you interrupt other people when they're busy? You know, if, if people are busy, do you walk up and interrupt them? You know, if, if if you're not ADD, you probably will wait till they're not so busy and then go ask them. But if you're ADD, you got to know right now. And so you, it, it doesn't bother you. Just go ahead and interrupt them. Oh, yeah. And so if you scored uh, 17 or higher on that second half of, of uh, nine, the nine questions that I gave just now, then uh, then they, then you have the H part. Some people just have ADD and they're not at all hyperactive and, and, uh, uh, but most people if they have the top half they're they also have the bottom half but then you see if they're more one or one or the other but most people have both i, I scored it's all you need is 17 over 17 to be adhd uh, and i scored a 29 over a 29 <laughs> so I, I don't have very many clients that are more add than i am so <laughs> that yeah. encourages them I know, I know, no one likes commercials, but seriously, folks, without the help from these organizations, we could not stay on the air. Please give a shout out to zencharts.com. If you're a mental health or addiction treatment center, you'll want to use their EHR. It's gorgeous, and they're just good people. And also my genetics, M-Y-G-E-N-E-T-X dot com, because knowing your genetic code empowers your mental health treatment. And lastly, CopeNotes.com. We love getting positive messages right to our phones every day from Johnny Crowder. He's the lead singer of Prison, a heavy metal band sharing their music about suicide prevention, addiction recovery, and mental health. See, that was painless. Support them as they support us. Back to the show. Yeah, and I mean, I, I definitely, I don't remember my score, but it was definitely uh, more on the hyper side. And I, if you, if listeners, you heard someone going in the background, that was me because, and I know part of it too is, I know that Melanie is probably like, does she interrupt? Yes, she does, because Melly works with me. Does she just uh, finish a sentence or jump in an award? Yes, she does. <laughs> yes, I do, and I just, I am not doing it on purpose. I, I'm i not doing it because I think someone is dumb or that I'm trying to be rude. I do ask now, can you talk for the next 10 minutes when I call someone, I don't do that with Melanie because I talk to her every day and I should, because, you know, you start, you get used to somebody and, um, you know, but anyway, I do that with other people. Now I will say, do you have, just because I have this flight of fancy to talk to you about what I think is the best thing on the planet. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm not interrupting you or that you want to hear yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah. And, and these are the traits I'm listening I mean, they can be bad habits that we learn and things too. Right. But usually, the ones I'm listening are are genetic. They're, uh, yeah. They're, you know, and we don't know exactly what the genetics is, but we know what medications can uh, can correct it. And when when I see it's, uh, I love like I've said so many times 
to our listening family how much I love being a psychiatrist, especially in this modern era. It was a lot tougher back in the 70s when I became one. But now, I mean, medical knowledge doubles every five years. And we have meds now that are just amazing. I mean, somebody can come that's, that thinks they're Jesus and hears voices telling them that they are. And I can put them on a dopamine medicine and eight days later, they're normal. Mm. You know, those things are all gone. And people with ADD, they can take most ADD medicines are either Adderall, Ritalin, or Vyvanse, or some, you know, some variety of those things. So we don't need to get into detail on ADD meds. And for people that can't swallow a pill, there's one called day trainer that you can just put a little patch on, on your skin once a day. But anyway, my, my clients who ha- do have pretty bad ADD and, uh, and I give them a medicine for it, like Adderall or Ritalin or, Vi- or Vyvanse, they all work, you know, pretty equally well. They come back. I, I, I'll give you some true stories. I, I had one that was getting, he worked at Starbucks and he was getting ready to lose his job. And so he came in to get ADD medicine because in order to avoid losing his job. And he came back uh, three months later and he had gotten a promotion. Mm-hmm. Not only did he not lose his job, but he got his, a promotion. I, I've had dozens and dozens who were, you know, they wanted to go to grad school, but they had a C average in college and it's hard to get into grad school yeah. without at least a, a good solid B average. And you can't get into medical school or physical therapy school or law school, places like that, unless you have a, a pretty much have an A minus average. And uh, so I've had a lot of a lot of college kids that had a C average and got on ADD meds and, and within uh, three months, well, I mean, within a few days, they're doing great, a lot better, but within a few months, they're their their report cards are up you know where they have an a average from c average to an a average mm. um i could just go on and on but people come and tell me you know every week this has been life-changing it's been life-changing and i know for me like i said i just found out i'm 73 years old i didn't know until i was about 55 or so that i had add and even though i've been treating it all my life i just never stopped to think well you know what i got those things too <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> I just never, I used denial, you know, so, but uh, ever since I got on the ADD meds, man, it's just so much easier. I get so much more done. You know, I can, I can write a book in a couple of weeks on an ADD medicine. It'd take me a lot longer without it. Yeah. Yeah. Melanie, what, what are your thoughts on this? I certainly have my personal story of this as the beginning of taking medication on it, but I want to hear from you, you know, your clinical side too, and personal side with this. Yeah, well, you know, (laughs) for people that don't get diagnosed with ADD or ADHD when they do have it, I mean, I feel like it can just be detrimental to their lives, especially when you're on the far end of the spectrum. Paul, I, I think not everyone is has had the ability as Paul had for for most of his life to really be able to find some way to make it in between, especially if there's some type of dual diagnosis with it, which just means there's another mental illness that go, that is goes along with ADHD, like bipolar depression or anxiety. Um, so it can just make it really difficult. But Which, which think, does go along with it. I'll, I'll butt in just for a second here. Yeah, you know, yeah. Take it right back to you. But since you brought that up, and since I'm ADD, I'll forget to bring, to bring it up <laughs> if I don't butt in right now. <laughs> but a majority of people that I see with bipolar also have ADHD and they're yeah. kissing cousins. But a majority of people with ADHD do not have bipolar. But uh, the people that do have ADHD, like I think something like 5% of the population has some sort of bipolar spectrum, which could be real mild to real severe. But among people with ADHD, it's probably 15 or 20% that would have bipolar spectrum disorders. And so it's a lot higher. But and 15 or 20, about 20% of the population has ADD. But among people with bipolar disorders, it's about, I think it's about 80% that have ADD along mm-hmm. with it. Okay, go ahead. Back to what you were saying. I just had to now, stick that in. Yeah, I mean, I love statistics. That's interesting. Yeah, Paul, we know you're ADD can you always butt in. Thanks for just proving the point. That's true. <laughs> It's true. Me I'm cheating. How often do you interrupt others? How often do you interrupt others when they're busy? 
<laughs> oh god i like Guilty. the statistics and i love that um you always have statistics to back things up i love that about you so you know add is working for you but yeah. um i think i've talked on the show before about um my 17 year old who has add and he didn't get diagnosed until later in his teens however i took him in and the, I started, and this is just for all moms and dads that are listening. If, if you suspect your child is having some problems, I started noticing a difference in his schoolwork and his grades as soon as things started to get difficult. And I think most parents and teachers know that schoolwork's not really difficult until you get into middle school. Um, and so he got into middle school, I think it was his eighth grade year. And I mean, he didn't start making bad grades, but he'd always been a, a straight A student, maybe a B here or there, but just always had done really well. And he just started struggling in his classes that were more difficult, like his math classes, the things that required, you know, his history classes that required a lot of memorization and things like that. And I went and talked to his teachers, and this is what I got back from the teachers. Oh, this happens all the time to boys in the eighth grade. Believe me, this is just a phase. He'll get back on track in a year or so. Literally, I got this from like three different teachers. And so I was like, okay, I'm just going to back off. So he pushed on through. I basically just had to stay on him a little harder. And I would have to sit down and help him through his math. And I would see these moments when he was doing his school work. And the only way that I know how to describe them is like explosions. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't explode, but I literally felt like I could see his brain exploding. Like he would just reach a point where he just, he just couldn't do it. And it, it literally was like, he run into a wall and he just couldn't do, he could not go any further. And I would be like, all right, buddy, why don't you go take a 15 minute break and then come back to it. <laughs> so that's how it started. Hi, this is Dr. Paul Meyer of the Meyer Clinics. Our Christian counselors across the country have a goal of helping all those who come to us to become what God has called them to be. If you're in a situation where you're not at peace within yourself or you just feel like there's joy that's missing in your life, we can come alongside to help you obtain peace and joy. This message is sponsored by the Meyer Clinic Foundation, a nonprofit Christian counseling ministry. The number is 1-888-7-CLINIC, 1-888-7-CLINIC. I think by the ninth grade, I actually took him in to get tested for ADD or ADHD, and the psychiatrist really thought that it was just an underlying anxiety issue. So we put him on anxiety medication, still no ADD medicine, even though in my gut, I was like, I know this kid has ADD. He can't even mm -hmm. read anymore. And that was one of the first things he started to tell me. He'd be like, Mom, I can't read anymore. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, I just, I'll read like two sentences and I don't even know what I read. <laughs> and he started telling me that. And, but I listened to the psychiatrist like so many of us do. And we put him on anti-anxiety medication. Um, and then his grades just continued the drop. And, you know, by the 10th grade, his GPAs dropped. He's always been quote known as a smart kid. And so then he quote felt stupid and it really started affecting his self-esteem, which I think actually contributed to him developing anxiety. And so it all just kind of worked in together. Eventually, I finally said, okay, enough, went to his pediatrician and said, this is what we need to do. She was on board, started taking medication, started taking Vyvanse. And the first, you know, three days that he was on it, he was, you know, sending me screenshots on his phone of Spanish and math, and he would just put little text at the bottom saying, all last year, I never understood this concept, and I just learned it in one day. And so it, it, it can make a huge difference in people's lives, and he started to finally get some of his self-esteem back, because it really affected his self-esteem. And But I really didn't feel like it started to, to raise its head until he was kind of going through puberty. So I just think it's confusing, Paul. I mean, what are your thoughts about that? Because I really yeah. didn't feel like I saw any signs of it. And I am a very perceptive person. Um, there's, you know, there's, yeah. Oh, go ahead. There's all no, different degrees of it. There's all yeah. different degrees of it. And, uh, and, and somebody that has a moderate ADHD problem, they may not notice that 
uh, like right. you said, until until uh, junior high or high school. I know I used to love to read when I was in elementary school. Yep, I would even so send away for books, you know. And yep. uh, now I, it's a lot easier for me to write a book than to read a book. Because <laughs> 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 I, get, I get bored reading a book. And, <laughs> but anyway, uh, but some kids are really wired, uh, even when they're young. I, I had, uh, I remember uh, back uh, 30 or 40 years ago, we, we could give people samples uh, that they could try in the office and things like that. One nice thing about ADD meds is, is uh, you don't have to wait a week to find out if it works or not. Ten, you know, 15 minutes after you take it, it either works or it doesn't, unless you're on too low a dose. But this, these parents brought in, I remember these parents brought in this kid that was about, oh, six or seven, probably seven years old. And uh, he had been kicked out of two elementary schools already because, he, you know, he just couldn't sit still. And uh, they didn't, so they brought him in not wondering, not, not knowing what to do. And I just observed him for a few minutes and I could tell he was real ADD. And so I, I pulled out a, a small dose of Ritalin, which you could do back then. Now a doctor would lose your license if you did that. You know, but <laughs> I pulled out a small dose of Ritalin and I said, is it okay if I give him this? And they said, yeah. And so I gave it to him and he swallowed it. And then he was, he'd, he'd go sit on one of my chairs and he was spinning around on it. He tried crawling up, uh, climbing up the drapes. I, I still remember it like it was yesterday. And so I just talked to the parents calmly about their child. And five minutes later, he sat down, he sat down uh, uh, by my desk and, and pulled out a chair and started uh, pulling out something to read and, and, and was writing something down on a piece of paper. And they stared and just couldn't believe it. They'd never seen him you know, sit still like that. And I said, this kid's got ADD. And if he takes a, a little bit of, of uh, Ritalin, uh, you know, during his school time, he's not going to get kicked out. He'll, you know, graduate with honors. You know what's interesting? There's there's so many people that that are so so many parents, and I'm not saying that this is a bad thing, but there's so many parents that are against Ritalin and against you know ADHD medication and think that it's they get overused sometimes. Yeah, because they get overused, right? I mean, I know that for me, like I could not. I I remember about seven years old, seven eight years old in school, and I. If I was not engaged in the sub, so let's say it was math, you know, we were, they were teaching us math. I literally would start to fall asleep I, because I didn't get it, it and I wasn't interested in it at all. Mm-hmm. And then it got to the point where every class that I was in, I just, the minute I sat down in the chair to listen to a lecture or to do the classwork, I immediately started to fall asleep. Now, some of that was, I was in a lot of trauma and severely depressed and PTSD and whatever, but, but that pattern kept going and I found ways to make my life work for me. So I, I, I could excel at work at a job where I was busy. If I had a really busy job, I could excel and I couldn't excel in school. So for me, it was like, oh my gosh, I tested out of school at 17 I was done and I immediately went to work full time and I've stayed, you know, working full time because I can stay awake if I'm engaged in the job and I had to be a CEO of my own company because I need that adrenaline rush. I need to have many different clients, many different things to be doing because the jobs I've had where I had to do the same thing every single day. I thought I was going, I would I would have a middle. <laughs> I just could not do it. So it's, you know, it's amazing what, what, I don't know. I wish I would have, I probably could have gone to college and got my degree if I had had this diagnosed and had medication at that time, but there was no way I literally could not do it. I just couldn't have done it. I worked in a factory during the summers to pay my way through college. And they put me on the assembly line where you're standing there Mm -hmm. turning a screw Every, you know, a, a line goes by and you keep putting a screw on a spot, you know, mm-hmm. and, and and I just started puking all over the place. I mean, <laughs> I, every day I would vomit and uh, mm-hmm. and rather than fire me, they let me be a janitor. But being a janitor, I, I could roam around and, and yes. you know, I did a really great job and, and uh, it didn't it didn't bore me to death. Uh, something else that came to mind that's uh, that's I think real important is uh, that they found that if, if young kids like elementary school kids have severe ADD, and they're not treated, then they get labeled as bad kids. Yes. The, the teachers think they're just being really bad and rebellious. 
So they get labeled as bad kids. They're sitting in the, well, they used to sit in the corner with a dunce hat. They wouldn't do that now either, or they'd get sued, but back, you know, <laughs> or, or they'd get, we'd get paddled or something like that when we were young uh, in school. But anyway, they get labeled the bad kid. They, they, they get ashamed. And, uh, and a lot of them uh, develop low, low self-esteem and the rate of their prison rate is a lot, lot higher. A lot of kids that have ADD and don't get it treated when they're young end up going to prison because the, their lives are spent, you know, being told that they're bad, they're bad. Right. And so after a while, they just believe it and they, so they fulfill it, self-fulfilling prophecy. And you think that that plays a part in choosing reckless activities like stealing or fighting or whatever, because A, you're being told you're bad, so of course, but B, it's it's a rush, it's a stimulant. You're looking for some way to get excitement and stimulate yourself, and so people can choose to get into high-risk activities um, because because of this. Is that a possibility? Yeah, like shoplifting. Yeah, or yeah, anything. You know, like these yeah. movie stars that that make you know eighteen million a year, and they they're caught you know shoplifting something that costs three dollars. Right. And, and they don't do it for the item; they do it to for get the, rush. The, the thrill of getting away with it. And I feel like, in some ways, for me, being someone that um, you know, I I would go do a job with, that I knew nothing about. And the rush of that, I needed that. That kept me from always wanting to sleep. It kept depression at bay, but it also, it helped me be able to focus. This is the only time I could like really focus because in regular life, focusing, forget it. It's just not going to happen. I mean, it just doesn't happen. I have to have all this stimulus and it has to be on on the razor's edge in order for me to be able to actually focus uh, otherwise it, i get bored you know what happened today uh kristen i hmm. I, I i diagnosed a, a client with add and and he felt really bad about it he said oh no that's horrible i said no it's not <laughs> i said it's wonderful i thank god often that i've got adhd uh, in fact, in, in, in my book, Blue Jeans, where I talk about different things that we inherit, my ADD chapter is called The ADHD Advantage. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and, I, and he said, what do you mean? And I said, uh, if I didn't have ADD, I might have still become a psychiatrist, but I'd be the kind that, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I'd be the kind that spends eight hours a day just uh, sitting there doing therapy on clients or giving medicines, and, and that's all I would do. But because I had ADD, I would get bored doing the same thing all day. Right. And so I ended up doing radio and television and writing books and, and developing a, a chain of clinics. And, you know, right. my, I, I owe my success, of course, to God first, but also I thank God that he gave me ADHD because that made me multitask. It made me bored to do the same thing all the time. And I ended up doing a lot of things that helped, uh, helped me to have to succeed in accomplishing goals that, that, that I developed, you know, that I believe God gave me. Yeah. So develop. it's a, it's a good thing. And then also it's an, advantage. it's an advantage. And then also let's talk about how it can be this disadvantage because I've also seen the other side of that where so many times I've um, stopped short of completing something because of that same boredom factor, great idea gets it all started. And then, boom, it's left in the wind and, you know, lots of stops and starts because I can't maintain that focus. And, yeah. uh, and so what I've found since taking, starting on, you know, a Vivance protocol, if that's how you say it, is I still have the benefit of being able to do a lot of different things and having multiple balls in the air. And I like it. And that's exciting for me. And that's fantastic. But I also now I can focus. I can get that proposal done. Yeah. I can get that meeting completed and do the stuff that someone asked me to do in the meeting. It's not like I, I don't have squirrel brain where yeah. someone told me something and it's pivotal and I really need to move this network that I'm running to a new place. But if I don't have the ability to focus on anything, it's never going to get anywhere. And now I feel like, oh my gosh, this is what I've been missing out on. This is it. Now, now, yeah. now I could actually get some 
amazing things done all the way to completion because now I can I can actually focus on menial things as well as still do all the blah stuff. Yeah. Yeah, ADHD overall is a big disadvantage unless you're treated. But if you're treated, then then I think you're better off than somebody that doesn't even have it. I think ADHD treated, you know, makes makes you uh, really good at a lot of things like, you know, sales or mm-hmm. or uh, even they're more likely to start a business and take a little risk and start their own business and things like that. So uh, what about, I think you can really help. Yeah. What about people that say, oh, you know, I do have bipolar and um, I've been diagnosed with bipolar and I have manic episodes and when I, but I also have been diagnosed with ADHD, but I can't take the medication because it makes me, it shoots me into mania. Cause so I have heard yeah. people say that. Yeah. It, yeah. And that, and that's, that's uh I treat people with uh, that have bipolar. I've got a well, hundred or more patients that, that I'm treating for bipolar altogether currently. And uh, 80% of them have ADHD and they take stimulants. But uh, like when I recently diagnosed somebody with uh, bipolar, I put them on uh, Lamictal, which is my favorite medicine for that. And I said, no, when you get stabilized, then you can, then you can get your ADHD treated. If, if you give them ADHD medicine right off the bat before they get a mood stabilizer, then they can uh, kick them into a, a manic episode. Or even if they take an antidepressant uh, right off the bat. Uh, people with bipolar, if if the doctor doesn't know that they have bipolar and they take an antidepressant, it'll make them manic where they right. don't sleep and they're hyperactive and, and they talk fast and they blow money on credit cards and, <laughs> and grandiose and, and uh, but irritable at people and things like that. Uh, and, and, and then they crash and burn, you know, and get real depressed. But, but I put people that are bipolar on antidepressants all the time. I just get them on a mood stabilizer first. And okay. then if they're on a mood stabilizer, the antidepressant works even better than it would in somebody that doesn't have bipolar. It works great without making a manic. The, the ADD medicine works great without making a manic. But they have to get on a mood stabilizer first. So it's a matter of balancing the medication yes. and working with someone who knows about the balance of that. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Because yeah. a lot of people do freak out about, I'm going to get, get unbalanced. I'm going to get unhinged. I'm going to, you know, fly off into the stratosphere and never come down. And that's what they're running away from. They don't want to do that because that's when life, right. you know, in the toilet for them. Yep. So that, that makes sense. How about people that worry about, oh, I'm going to be irritable. And I have a good thing that my doctor said about this, but I wanted to ask you, Paul, about that. People that say, well, you know, it makes me irritable. Well, it, it doesn't usually do that. Most of the time it doesn't. But once in a while, somebody will tell me, you know, they get on, I put them on Adderall or something. And they say, boy, you know, I'm a lot more irritable. I don't like that. My mate doesn't like that. And if it does that, that's an unusual side effect you know maybe one out of 25 people that take it it would have that effect and i said well then we ought to try something different that doesn't do that Interesting. or uh or they may have uh a, some bipolar tendencies but not enough for it to show up people with bipolar get irritable more easily and uh, uh if they try two or three add medicines and they all make them more irritable then if you, if they take uh, lamictal again the best bipolar medicine, then then the irritability goes away and they can take the medicines together. Interesting. Well, this is what my, my doctor said, which I thought was made so much sense. She said the same thing you said. It's not like it makes you um, irritable in, in most cases. She said, it's just that for a, for the amount of time that you've taking it, you don't have squirrel brain and you, and you really enjoy not having squirrel brain. And as it wears off over the course of the day, so maybe later in the evening, your squirrel brain comes back and you yeah, yourself true. find that irritating. So it isn't that that's the medication true. is making you irritated. It's that you're like, wait a minute, I've been feeling so <laughs> focused. <That's a> good <laughs> point. And I thought that makes so much sense. I totally get it. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I, I take one reason I like Vivian, Vivian costs more. So, you know, if you don't have good insurance, yeah, you can, it's about three hundred. You can get Ritalin some places for four dollars a month if you pay cash. You know, right. but and, and it works fine. But but it only lasts four hours per pill, and you're only allowed uh, three a day. So uh, so that still would cover you twelve hours. You know, but if you take a, a Vivance, it's 
just taking that one pill lasts 12 hours. And, and uh, if some people work real long days, some people have insulin only lasts about eight hours. And so I have some people that, uh, and they work long days because they're lawyers or something. And uh, so they'll take five ants in the morning and then they'll take an Adderall in the late afternoon to last them four more hours. But mm. that way they, they're, they're uh, pretty focused up until about nine o'clock at night, you know, and then, and then they go into their fog, but by then they're watching TV anyway. So, <laughs> you know, Kristen, I, you know, I gave you that um, link to get your Vivance yeah. for no more than $35. I don't pay, I pay $35 for my son's copay, which isn't bad. There was a link on, on a website. We'll try to include it on the blurb with the show for Vivance. And then yeah, the other some people, pieces, it's $15. Sometimes yeah. Even- and even cheaper. Another thing I want, I guess this goes along with side effects is, you know, since my 17 year old does have anxiety, then uh, unfortunately for him, when he tends to be anxious, he loses his appetite and he will actually choose not to take his Vivance because it literally just completely gets rid of his appetite. Yeah. So unless he it's really has for weight loss, yes. Vivance is- it's yeah. approved as a weight loss pre- or for binge eating disorder, they call it. Yes. If you yeah. have binge eating disorder, that's yep. the treatment of choice. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. It's perfect mm-hmm. for me because I definitely have struggled with binge eating disorder has been my thing. And um, uh, so that in that respect, it's it's great for me. I, I noticed that I have to be careful what time I take it because then I have a hard time going to sleep. Uh, because I'm still like super hyper focused and my brain is yeah. clickety clack clack clack, and so having being careful about when I when I take it is you know is is something new for me to watch and be aware of. But uh, and also I like the fact that if I don't want to if I don't want to take it over a weekend, I don't have to. I really yeah, can I skip choose it to. Yeah, I just choose to take it for when I really need to focus on getting work done or, mm-hmm. you know, for a specific task. And that piece is different for me than like antidepressants where it's a cumulative effect. You need to take it every single day, no matter what. Yeah. But it just is amazing to me. I think I called Melanie and Melanie, what is your... <laughs> What has your reaction been to some of my <laughs> stuff I've sent I mean, you? Honestly, just ha- just happy. I mean, I don't. I feel like, um, and we're just being honest here, right? Because yes, we're friends. That's but right. I feel like uh, it's more clear. You know that you can be wordy. You would say that about yourself. Oh hell yeah! Um, and so, like run-on sentences are just. <laughs> tangential thinking or even just like you have a um you have a tendency to write your thoughts mm-hmm. um and which I love hearing but not everyone would I guess <laughs> if you're in a business situation so I just think it makes you more precise in your writing I think it's clear um I have not been you know overwhelmed by I mean honestly it's it's very stabilizing. That's the word that I keep, that keeps coming to mind um, is that you're able just to, you know, focus in on your thoughts and there's like a new self-confidence in your voice. And that is lovely. I love to hear that. So yeah, yeah, those are my thoughts. <laughs> and I brought that up not to continue, you know, keep talking about me. Just, I want listeners that, you know, do struggle with this to see what it's like from someone uh, that's watching someone that, has it and how things change um, from their side of of the, of the fence. I know how I feel on it. I know. And, you know, and honestly, I think maybe it's as we get older or if it's because of social media, I think plays a part in it too. But the, the way information comes to us today in short sentences. And I mean, everybody for the most part, that's, on the internet a lot and using social media has problems now reading an entire book because we're so used to getting our information in short sound bites these days. Yeah. It's um, an ADHD society. Yes, it is. It really is. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, you're right. The, the book companies are, are going broke, you know, uh, yeah. it's hard to get books published anymore because uh, people don't stop and buy a whole book and read it from cover to cover. I mean, a lot of people won't because 
they can just Google something and find out about it. You know, they, um, very true. Different now, I mean, it's why yeah. Oprah's late at the book, the book that she had written, she said, look, I try to do what people, what I see society is going to get the most benefit from. So she wrote a book, but it was all extremely short stories, even two or three sentence paragraphs fill up this book about goodwill and, and living a better life and so on, because she realized in today's society that that's what people were going to read rather than this soliloquy that, you know. <laughs> yeah. And 20 or 30 years ago, uh, talk radio used to be really big, you know, uh, and um, I was doing radio every day to about 2 million people. And in the, I think the top three shows were uh, in, and we took, took turns being, uh, in first place, but uh, Dobson and Chuck Swindoll and, and our show uh, were rated really high. And then now, you know, later, yeah, they, they, there's hardly any uh, talk show channels anymore. There's very, very few, and, and music has replaced them. And uh, for a long time, I did uh, a little psychiatric thing on K Love, you know, uh, a music station, but they said, you know, limit it to about three minutes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Instead of an hour of live, people, you know, questions and answers live and all that. It was three minutes. You know, so. Well, I've noticed it too. I've noticed when I do our thirty-minute shows, I do with Dr. John Huber um, once a week. You know, those shows get a lot of downloads, but they still don't out-download your shows, Paul. And I say this: we are in the middle. Yes, people want information in shorter sound bites. However. A therapeutic appointment is a 50 minute hour usually, and there's no way that I'm going to interview someone about their extreme trauma and their mental health or whatever, and try to get that squished into 30 minutes. It's just not going to happen. So I will always, I will mix it up with short shows in between, but I'll still for really deep topics. You know what? It takes it takes time to get there. And what I find a lot of people do is so they pause the show and they come back to it later. It's not like they don't yeah. finish it. I'd never thought of that, but it's pretty amazing that, uh, that eight or 10,000 people would download a, our one hour show and listen to the whole thing. Yep. Yeah, they don't. They, they... <laughs> I never stopped to think how amazing that is. <laughs> so those of you listening to me, I, I'm sorry. I, I appreciate you. You know, you, I know if you, if you do have ADHD and you scored, high on that desk that it's really an effort, you know, so thank you. <laughs> That's right. And they do, but they do, they pause and they come back later. They, I hear yeah. that all the time. They come they listen back to 10 minutes at a time. Yeah. They'll listen to as much as they can at a time, but I, I have a hard time even getting into like Netflix series now, like even that's too much. I don't have the patience to wait through the first two shows to get into a series anymore. So yeah. I'm noticing it's kind of getting worse in some ways. And I'm hoping that, you know, this being, being met on medication, the proper medication now will help, you know, in those areas too. But right now it's helping me with my work. And what I want to do with this network, we just found out that we're going to be on a television network now, which I hadn't told you, Paul. Uh, so in order for me to do this well, I need to um, be able to focus. <laughs> so <laughs> that yeah. finance is going to be working overtime. I can just tell you that. <laughs> yeah, because you got so many coals in the fire. Yep, exactly. Well, any last words, Melanie, before we uh, hit the road? Uh, I think a lot of people will benefit from the show uh, to totally. So please don't hesitate. I think that Adderall and, you know, those types of stimulant medications have really gotten a bad reputation, but they can really make a difference in an adult's life, a child's life, a teen's life, anyone that actually has that diagnosis. It can just make such a huge difference and can be really beneficial. And you know, the thing is, and I remember, um, I think my son's pediatrician told me this, and that was, you know, if if he takes it and he has a negative response and he doesn't do well, then he doesn't need to be on it. Then he's not ADD. Yeah. <laughs> but if he takes it and he's immediately able to focus better, then because 
so we were worried about what dosage to use, then, then this is what he needs. All you're doing is leveling the playing field so that mm-hmm. he can have the same benefits that everyone else has when they're doing the work and he's not, you know, fighting um, just to get small tasks done because it just requires so much energy when you're working against yourself. And that's kind of what's happening when you have an ADD brain or ADHD brain. If you got an ADD kid um, in elementary school and whether in, in, if he's really genuinely ADHD, um, then getting him on the right medicine can make a difference between, between him becoming a prisoner or, or mm-hmm. uh, him becoming a brain surgeon. Right. Yep. Yep. I agree. And I wanted to tell everyone, if you want to hear more about this subject, more targeted towards women, Dr. Lisa Day, who is one of the wonderful practitioners of uh, Meyer Clinics, is coming on the Clinical Christian next week um, to talk about ADHD, specifically um, about women. So look forward to that show, too. That show is is part of uh, the Meyer Clinics podcast on our network. And uh, we just get the benefit of just having Paul on this show. So <laughs> I have the benefit of hanging out with you guys. <laughs> well, thank you. I look forward to Monday nights. Me That's, too. We tape for those of you who don't know it because you listen to it any day of the week, you know, but we, <laughs> we tape uh, uh, Monday um, nights. Yeah. Um, most Monday nights, you know, once in a while we have to miss because of important things like if the Dallas Cowboys ever play on a Monday night. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> With those important things, you know. Just for real important things, you know. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you both very, very much. And I want to say thanks to our listening family for another edition of Mental Health News Radio. enjoyed this podcast. Tune in next time for another engaging discussion on relevant mental health topics. If you have any questions about Meyer Clinics, please visit our website at meyerclinics.com. That's M-E-I-E-R clinics.com or call us at 888-7-CLINIC. Don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or any of your favorite podcast apps. And please note that we are a member of and produced by Mental Health News Radio Network mhnrnetwork.com.